to the FFP. Obviously, I'm here to give you our week 10 injury updates. Plus, there'll be a little bit of news mixed in there. But generally, just this video is here to get you guys caught up on everything that you need to know heading into this week and beyond. As always, there's simply too many teams and too many players in the NFL for us to keep track of. 32 teams. Then you add in per team, there's 53 players plus all of the coaches and free agent players that could get signed. You know, last week we talked about Jay Ajayi and other players. It's just simply too much for us to keep track of. So that's what this video is for. We're going to give you guys a last second update as far as what we know heading into Sunday's games. And of course, this is a nice last minute opportunity for you guys to ask some questions as far as start, sit goes or wave or goes or whatever it may be. Now, I've been making sure to answer a lot more questions recently. Probably the last two or three weeks, our question answering has been down quite a bit, and that's just because we've been so busy and things have been very hectic. But I've been pretty intentional this week, putting in a lot of effort, probably answered 90 plus percent of the questions and comments that have been uh, left on our videos. So I think there's a pretty good chance I'll be able to get around to it. Uh, I've definitely had some time freed up recently, so I'll make sure to be looking at your guys' comments and checking up with that. So make sure to drop a comment down below. Enough with the comments now. I got a question for you guys, which I guess you have to answer in the comments. But one thing that I felt like doing, I thought it might be fun on Saturdays or some day of the week to release a uh, NFL Power Rankings video. It's not really fantasy related, uh, but me and Rob were discussing what's the sort of video that we could release every week that you guys would want to hear from or you guys want to hear about. And it would just be a fun, somewhat casual video where we just discuss what we know about these NFL teams and their records and how they've been playing and which teams we think are better, which teams we think are worse, whatever. It would be a fun video to do. I think it would be uh, really interesting too as well to see how things develop throughout the season, do a little bit of non-fantasy work but if you guys aren't into that sort of thing let us know because we don't want to be putting energy and effort into anything that you guys don't want the other thing i'd add to that is our three main videos would be our waiver wire injury update our start set those would be our focus and we would only do that video the extra the fourth video if we could afford to based on our time and our energy and such things like that but let's just get right into it i'll quit wasting your guys this time we're going to just get everyone caught up on where we're at right now All right, so we should probably start off with the quarterbacks and Matt Ryan. He's been struggling with that sprained ankle and is currently marked as questionable, set to uh, kind of come back this week. Now, he was limited in practice on Thursday. I think that's smart by the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're playing things cautious and letting him heal. Sounds like he's going to play. As always, a mature fantasy owner would monitor that situation, however. Um, Matthew Stafford, same sort of deal. He's struggling with a back and a hip injury. He's also marked as questionable, but much like Matt Ryan, I consider him a guy who's probably going to play. I would be surprised if he didn't. He was limited in uh, Thursday's practice, though that seems to really be the trend for quarterbacks, not just this week, but many other weeks. If you're going to limit a guy in practice, it seems to be like Thursday's the practice to do it. Moving on now to Pat Mahomes, he's back. That's um, He's been actually completely removed from sort of the, the injury report, so to speak. And then uh, the Chiefs have come out and said that they want to see how he feels um, Saturday after two or three days straight of full practice. They want to make sure that he doesn't kind of re-aggravate that knee. We'll talk about another player who did that, but oftentimes guys will seem healthy. They'll get out there and practice, and then you'll notice that wherever the injured spot was, there's some swelling or it's extra sore or whatever. They're going to be cautious with him. He is their franchise quarterback, but it seems like he's going to play. Things are very hopeful for him. And of course, good for you Chiefs fans. You definitely added the best quarterback in the league back into your roster. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, another quarterback to consider right now, and he's struggling with that knee. He did practice again Thursday. That was the second straight day that he practiced, and he was not limited in his practice. So while he is put on the injury report right now, and in many uh, ESPN, Yahoo, a lot of different places, he's marked as questionable. He's another quarterback where it looks like he's going to play. Be smart, monitor that situation. But right now, it seems like Brissett's fine. Again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Any smart fantasy owner is going to continue to check this and monitor this. But he looks pretty good. Cam Newton, however, he was placed on the IR. He is not going to be playing. So, of course, that's a very bad sign for him. But for Kyle Allen, that's a huge boost. I think that gives a lot of confidence to him. The coaching staff saying, we're not going to try to rush Cam Newton back. We are fine with our quarterback. He's played well. And in fact, I think for a lot of people, this, and me included, this seems like a, a solid sign that they want to roll with Kyle Allen as their future quarterback. And um, Cam Newton may never play another snap for the Carolina Panthers unless something happens to Kyle Allen injury-wise or he begins to play horrible. I, I have a really good feeling he is the future Carolina Panthers quarterback. So my question for you is, A, do you think Cam Newton is going to play more for the Carolina Panthers or no? And B, 
They're probably going to trade him if they plan on keeping Kyle Allen as the starter. Where do you think he could end up going? I'd be very interesting to see if he went to a team like Denver, for example. But the other quarterback situation to mention is Nick Foles. Jaguars head coach Doug Marone said on Tuesday that Nick Foles will be the starting quarterback for their Week 11 matchup versus the Colts. So that is good for Nick Foles. Bad for Gardner Minshew, of course. But I actually think that you could stream him. For starters, we, I mean, you just listen to me talk about all these different banged up quarterbacks and all these different situations, quarterbacks with bad matchups, quarterbacks who haven't played well, who don't have good receivers to throw to, all these sort of things, right? But Nick Foles has got good wide receivers. I think he's got three guys, Chris Conley, of course, he's got DJ Chark and DD Westbrook. So he's got some targets with Leonard Fournette out of the backfield. He's a streamable quarterback depending on the week. So definitely a guy to monitor. I think that's actually fairly good news. Again, not huge news, but... I think Nick Foles is playable. So that does have a slight fantasy impact, nothing too huge. Of course, this week, amongst the quarterbacks, I think Pat Mahomes has to have the biggest fantasy impact. Again, especially when you consider Brissett, Matthew Stafford, Matt Ryan, a lot of these guys are on the injury report, but they are expected to play. And so I don't think there's a huge fantasy impact from there. Of course, Matt Ryan coming back will have a huge impact. I keep saying that word, but for the Atlanta Falcons. And of course, uh, Julio Jones, that's going to be great for him. Calvin Ridley, that's going to be great for him. I think the one I'm most curious to see about is Devonta Freeman. How does his performance get affected by Matt Ryan being in? Is Matt Ryan going to increase that passing game such that defenses will focus on it and Devonta Freeman has a good week? Who knows? Again, there are a lot of question marks there. It seems like he's going to play. But that is our quarterback wrap-up. Unless I missed something, I would always encourage you guys to leave a comment down below and let everyone know if I missed something. Again, this is a video for you guys. So if there's something in here that you guys need to know and it isn't here, put in the comments down below. I will favorite it and then everyone can check. It'll be right up top and they'll be able to see it. But let's move on now, get a little quick, uh, quick update on the running back situation as far as injuries go. All right, so the first guy we probably got to talk about is running back Ido Smith. Now, he's got uh, a neck issue, and he was ruled out for this week. He hasn't played since week seven versus the Rams, so, of course, that seems like actually a pretty significant injury, and that is, a again, a boost to Devonta Freeman. I just talked about him, but with Matt Ryan back, that is a very good situation for him. Matt Breida, now he, with his ankle injury that he's struggling with, he is questionable. He was limited in practice on Thursday. However, he did play through his ankle injury last Thursday and actually ended up leading the team in rushing. So what I tend to lean towards is that his limited time in practice is simply precautionary. I think it's smart by the team. They want to keep their backs healthy, especially because Matt Breida is a smaller back. If you've got a guy like Saquon Barkley or Zeke Elliott, you got a big back. I think you can feel okay about it, but those smaller backs tend to lean towards the injury issues. Um, but again, it's a great sign that he led that team for rushing through the ankle injury. He is marked as questionable. It's not a major concern for me, but it is a minor concern um, in a backfield where they're going to play things by really close to the vest. And whoever happens to be the hot hand this week gets the most carries. And so if he comes out, his ankle injury slows him down on the first drive or in the first quarter, and he doesn't play quite up to par, easily the ball could just go to Tevin Coleman the rest of the game. So there's a lot of nerves there with that situation um, as far as start sit goes, but I don't think that he'll miss this week. Christian McCaffrey, he's got that knee thing going on right now. He is questionable. Now, I think he's fine. He did miss practice on Wednesday, and he was limited on Thursday. But again, he is really the workhorse back of that Carolina Panthers team. He is absolute stud. He is a do-it-all, jack-of-all-trades. This, I mean, he is the guy. If you're the Carolina Panthers, you're going to limit him in practice. In fact, they've been limiting him in practice all year long. I think the worst thing you can do for a workhorse back is overwork him. I mean, that's just simply it right there. So I think they're being smart. I'm not too concerned about it. I, I don't think that it's something that I'm worried about. Uh, as always, it's something to monitor. Barkley did miss time with that high ankle sprain, and you hate to have a stud back you drafted in the first round go out. Seems like he's going to be fine, though. I would get your ducks in a row, get your backup running backs figured out, and to have a plan as to who you're going to play if he is out, because you hate to be caught off guard if he misses, especially this late in the season. But moving on out of James Conner, now he's got that shoulder injury, and right now he's actually doubtful. It's funny because he's a guy who I felt like he was going to be okay heading into things. It was just about a week ago or so where we're hearing reports that, hey, he might be fine. Um, he did get in practice. He was limited on Wednesday. And uh, Coach Mike Tomlin, he actually said that he was very optimistic earlier this week about his chances, but now it doesn't look like he's going to play. He's currently marked as doubtful, at least according to uh, Yahoo Fantasy Football. But 
I, I, I tend to agree with that. And I think that, of course, if that happens, you got to play Jalen Samuels. For me, he comes in as a low to mid RB2, especially in PPR leagues. In standard leagues, the way he's been running the ball makes me very nervous. Uh, but he's the guy who gets a lot of usage. He had 13 catches last week. In PPR leagues, it's hard for me not to tell you to replace James Conn with him. That's the move that I would probably make. In standard leagues, it depends on your running back situation. He does hold a lot less value, but that would really be one of those situations of leave a comment. We'll talk about the very specific situation that you're in. Moving on now, Alan Kamara, he is back and healthy. He's expected to play. Seems like he's recovered fully from his ankle injury. Um, However, what we do know is that Latavius Murray, um, at least according to Sean Payton, is, quote, going to maintain a significant role in that offense. I think he's played well enough with Alvin Kamara out that they realize that they got themselves a Mark Ingram type back and they want to use him for two reasons. One, they're a team that is clearly going to make playoffs, probably going to win the division, and it looks like they're playing for a Super Bowl. So you want to keep a guy like Alvin Kamara healthy, and I think they want to mix it up, really run that change of pace back sort of situation. I think if uh, you're the Saints, you look at a team like San Francisco and the 49ers and realize, hey, you can interchange your running backs every single drive, every single snap, every single play, week, whatever, and you can be fine. You just need to get the most out of whoever happens to be out there. And that's what they're really trying to do. I think they're very smart to do this. So Latavius Murray does hold some value as a possible flex play, especially in games where it's a blowout and they don't want to risk Alvin Kamara's health. But he doesn't hold a lot of value. Of course, Alvin Kamara comes back and he's hands down the number one back, especially in the passing game. <clears throat> but that's the wrap up for that situation. Let's talk about Le'Veon Bell now. So Bell did not practice Wednesday. And here's what Adam Gay said. He said, we'll see how he progresses after that. Now, I think it's a, a bad sign that the Jets uh, decided to promote running back Josh Adams from the practice squad up. So I think that definitely is a, is a slight negative sign for Le'Veon Bell. Again, he was limited in Thursday's practice. He missed Wednesday's practice. However, what we have heard is that he, quote, looks good. It sounds like he's going to play, but if you're a Le'Veon Bell owner, you do have to wonder, is he 100%? What is he going to play? How is he going to perform for you out there? Um, that is definitely a situation that makes me nervous. The next two running backs we're going to talk about, guys, are two running backs who I think um, it's, it's not an injury update, but we'll have an update as far as having boost to their fantasy value. And the first one is Ronald Jones Jr. Now, head coach Bruce Arians came out and told reporters that he has, quote, earned the right to start and play more snaps. That's great news for Ronald Jones Jr. If he's available in your league, I think you got to pick him up now. Now, I'm not super big on the hype train. I don't think that this means he's suddenly going to see 10 to 15 more touches and he's going to be some stud week to week start running back. But this could very well be a step in the right direction. Now, it's funny because Bruce Arian said that based on the way he played last week, that he played well enough to earn the starting role and to have more touches. He didn't play that great last week. He had 20 touches for just 82 yards. That is not great. That does include two catches, by the way. His yards per carry of just 3.7, that's bad, which is sad because it's better than the previous two weeks where I believe he had two and then I believe like 2.7 or something like that. Um, but the fact of the matter is he hasn't been that productive. I think it just comes down to the fact that he has been outplaying Peyton Barber. He did have a touchdown last week. And the other piece of good news is it's funny. A lot of people don't know this. Ronald Jones Jr. has had, so for his carries of 10 plus yards he's had 12 of those so of his 92 carries 12 of them have gone for more than 10 yards that is a 13 percent ratio of being able to do that which is actually fourth best among the 33 qualifying running backs in the nfl right now the league average is 10.3 percent so that may mean that it's possibly a sign that, hey, he's a good running back. He's got breakaway potential. He's been outperforming Peyton Barber. Maybe it's just the offensive line's fault. Again, I still don't have a lot of trust in him. I still don't have a lot of faith in him. But when you hear something like that, coming off a week with a touchdown, I, I feel like you got to pick him up. you got to own him. At the very least, keep him off somebody else's bench. The other thing I wanted to say was address the Kareem Hunt situation. Head coach Freddie Kitchens told reporters that he's excited about Kareem Hunt and he's excited to get him on the field saying, and I quote, definitely have a role. That's what he said about him versus the Bills this week. We saw with Melvin Gordon, we saw with Le'Veon Bell, we see it every single week. A running back comes off after missing a few weeks or in his case, half a season and we get excited but in all reality, he's very rusty and he's not going to have a great performance, especially in a tough matchup versus a good Bills defense. 
Somebody, one of our uh, subscribers asked a question, um, which was, hey, how is this going to impact Nick Chubb's value? And quite honestly, I don't think it's going to impact his value much. Not only do I think it's going to take two or three weeks for Kareem Hunt to get on Rusty, even if he is an effective back, it's going to take two or three weeks for him to get to that place. So you've still got three weeks until then. The other thing being, Nick Chubb has been far and away one of the best ground game running backs in the NFL. He doesn't do quite as much in the passing game, which we'll address in a second. But on the ground, I have a hard time imagining that any back is going to come in and take away touches from him. Maybe two or three, but that's, that's sort of expected every game. I don't care if you're Ezekiel Elliott or Dalvin Cook. It, it happens where they bring in a back up to give you rest every once in a while. I don't think that he's going to lose carries from where he's been getting recently. Now, Kareem Hunt will most likely step in and take in some role as the passing running back in the passing game, catching balls. What I'll say about that is Nick Chubb wasn't doing it in the first place. Are you really worried that you're, you're sitting there going, oh, wow, that really ruins his PPR value? You know, Nick Chubb didn't have a lot of PPR value to begin with. So I don't think it's a major concern for me. I think that as a third down receiving back and a slight change of pace back to give rest to their starter, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt will come in and play. I don't think Kareem Hunt has huge value, and I don't think that he seriously devalues uh, Nick Chubb. I want you guys to hold me that to that because if we're sitting here two, three weeks from now and Kareem Hunt splitting carries with Chubb, then I was wrong. But that's what I think right now genuinely about that situation. It's not a major concern for me. Minor concern, something to monitor. I would monitor everything, especially as a Nick Chubb owner. I completely understand the concern, but it's not something that I'm terribly worried about right now. Um, that is my running back uh, kind of wrap up there. So we'll move on now to the wide receivers for this week. All right, so here's what we know right now. First off, Adam Thielen, hamstring. He was ruled out for week 10 versus the Dallas Cowboys. That kind of stinks. That does. As a Vikings fan, you want him to play in this big matchup. That's going to be tough. This does add value to Obelisi Johnson or something like that. Everyone knows I pronounced it wrong, so go ahead and tell me in the comments down below how stupid I am. But he's got touchdowns, two touchdowns in the last three weeks. So Johnson's actually got some value as a wide receiver three plug and play to replace for owners who are missing Adam Thielen this week. This is a big matchup versus the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys' pass defense is not bad. But this could very well be one of those big sort of prime time important matchups of the season. Could be very high scoring. It's possible. So again, if you are looking for a play this week to replace Adam Thielen, I think Obelisi Johnson, not a bad play, not a great play either though. We may not know Brandon Cooks. He is out this week. He announced on Twitter, he was saying on Twitter that he expects uh, his concussion is getting better and that it seems like it's moving behind him now. And he thinks he's going to play before the 2019 season is over. However, just the fact that he has to come out and say that says that A, may not happen, and B, he's not going to be playing this week, probably not next week. We'll see how this thing monitors. Man, concussions this year have really taken out some wide receivers. And so I've got some major concerns with him. I wouldn't quite be expecting him to come back next week. Uh, Sterling Shepard, same situation, same sort of guy. Concussion has just banged this guy up and held him out. and He'll be out for week 10 as well. And this is another uh, situation where it's like, when is this guy coming back? When is it time to drop him? When is it time to move on? I don't exactly know that. It does depend on your roster, but uh, he won't be playing this week. And I'm starting to wonder if he's going to play this week at all. But that's the concussion situation. Move on now to Marcus Valdez Scantling. He's currently marked as questionable. He did remain, uh, excuse me, he did remain in practice. He practiced on Thursday, but he was very limited. That's what I'm trying to say there. But um, he's a guy who struggled other than that as well. He had just one catch combined over his last two games, and he hadn't had a week with more than two catches since week four. So this is a guy who Marcus Valdez Scantling many weeks ago, we thought he would be the guy. We felt like he had some potential. That's not the case. Definitely seems like Alan Lazard is the guy right now. I would stay away from Marcus uh, Valdez Scantling, who again may not even play this week. I would definitely consider dropping him for another pickup. For those of you who are concerned, Devontae Adams remained limited in practice. Now, he did play last game, 11 targets, 7 catches. In my book, he looked fine. I think he's going to be fine this week, but I just want to put that in and let you guys know. He was put on the injury report, but I don't think that's a major issue. I could be wrong. As always, check it Sunday morning and see. Now, wide receiver Josh Gordon recently uh, released by the New England Patriots, as that's what they have to do when he gets cleared from the IR. Um, but... <clears throat> 
signed by the Seattle Seahawks. He's currently struggling with an ankle injury and he is questionable. Now, it's a scary situation. You go over to a team and you haven't played there yet and you miss your first practice with an ankle injury. I honestly have to expect to feel like he is not going to play this week. Or if he does, he's going to come in sort of as a novelty play from the coaches, especially if they can get up early or whatever it may be. They might put him out there for five or six snaps to see what he can do or what he looks like. Or, you know, hey, say congratulations we're excited around the team, but I don't think he holds any fantasy value this week. I wouldn't be playing him. That's a situation I would avoid. And I don't think that he is going to take away from DK Metcalf's value this week. I've said it in the past where, you know, I think that Josh Gordon signing with the Seattle Seahawks could hurt the value of those other two wide receivers by allowing Russell Wilson to spread the ball out more. That won't happen this week. I think that both Tyler Lockett and Metcalf maintain their typical value. Wide receiver A.J. Green suffered a setback with his ankle. Sounds like it very well could be indefinite. Now, he did come out and he said that, you know, he wants to be playing in the 2019 season. He doesn't want to miss all year. But to be quite honest at this point, I'm feeling like that's going to happen. And I don't think he holds a lot of fantasy value. I think far too many people have been holding on to him for far too long. Hopefully there's still some wide receiver options for you to go up there and pick out uh, and get a guy to replace him. Because to be quite honest... That's where I'm at right now. Imagine he comes back in a few weeks. Great. It's fantasy playoffs. It's too late. Do you really trust this guy in the playoffs when he hasn't played all year? I certainly don't. So I think, I think honestly, it's time to get another wide out. Uh, Amari Cooper this week playing against the Minnesota Vikings. He has a bruised knee and is questionable. Now, here's what we know. We don't know much, but he was diagnosed with a, a bruised knee or a knee contusion. I don't really think that it matters too much. He is questionable. He's been very on the fence. And I don't actually know a lot about this. I feel like the Dallas Cowboys have actually kept this kind of hush-hush um, where we're just not given much information. And typically, we're given just enough information for me to lean one way or the other. Well, I'll say, I think he's going to play or I doubt he's going to play or whatever. I honestly don't know. I feel like it's a flip of the coin. Um, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm going to try to play him this week. I really am. Of course they are. Um, but you definitely have to monitor this situation. Um, I know somebody who asked me about this, and I told them, and this is what I would tell everyone who owns Mari Cooper, um, be ready for him to either play or not play either way. Get your ducks in a row and figure out which wide receiver you're going to start if he doesn't play. That's what you need to do. You need to get set and prepared in case he doesn't because I think that is a real possibility. Wide receiver T.Y. Hilton with his calf. He is currently marked as doubtful. Um, essentially, they're saying that there is a chance for him to play. Head coach Frank Reich refused to rule him out this week for Week 10 versus the Dolphins. I don't see him playing, to be quite honest with you. It looks like Zach Pascal is going to be the wide receiver to start this week. I think he could have some very good value in this matchup. Uh, the final wide receiver situation we got to talk about is Deshaun Jackson, who was placed on the IR. He will miss the rest of the season. Looks like the Philadelphia Eagles went out and signed wide receiver Jordan Matthews. I don't think he holds a whole lot of fantasy right now, fantasy value right now. Looks like he's coming in to be the fourth or fifth wide receiver for the Eagles. There's a small chance that he plays well and earns himself some extra value and could be played later on. However, I really doubt that. Again, we're getting to the place where it's like, you're going to play a guy, we're just a few weeks out of the fantasy playoffs, and are you really going to trust the guy in the playoffs? For me, probably not. It is a situation to monitor. We'll see how his role impacts. But somebody asked about that. That's simply why I include it in this video. And uh, that's my wrap-up for the wide receivers. Feels like there's a lot of wide receivers to monitor. A lot of players this week who are questionable but not out. And I always hate that on the fence stuff. But let's wrap it up with some tight ends to talk about. Not too many, but just make sure that we're thorough and we don't miss anyone. All right, so we'll wrap this video up with just a couple of wide, or excuse me, just a couple of tight ends to cover. One, George Kittle. He's struggling with a knee and an ankle injury and is currently marked as questionable. Now, he isn't practicing Thursday or Friday. So, of course, that is a very bad sign in a situation to monitor. And honestly, he could very well be out. As I've said other times this video, probably feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. Get your ducks in a row. Figure out what your replacement option is. Because another tight end who's out this week, and a pretty big tight end, Evan Ingram, he is out. This was He was really a surprise add to the injury report. I, I was very surprised to see him pop up at all this week. And then all of a sudden, it was like, boom, a day later, um, he's not playing this week. Sounds like he's going to be replaced by tight end Rhett Eliasson. Probably doesn't hold any fantasy value, but I had to go out and find a replacement this week. The replacement I went with for him was Vance McDonald. Um, so that's probably what I would suggest to you if he is available, play him. But 
And then the final guy is Ricky Seals Jones. He was ruled out this week. Um, again, continuing to struggle with that injury. He didn't have huge value, but just to let you know about that, gets to be thorough. There aren't a whole lot of tight ends already to discuss that have huge fantasy value. And so then when you limit only the ones who are you know injured and stuff, there aren't a whole lot to talk about. But that is my wrap up for this video. Again, we're really starting to get in that point in the season where we're playing for wins, we're playing to make the playoffs and win a championship. Things are getting tight. I got a question. How many of you guys out there are playing to kind of clinch the division? Right now, I have a two and a half game lead on my dad in a league on Rob. And so I'm looking towards winning another week or two, which will clinch the division. And then I'll be able to start picking guys based, picking guys up based on the second and the championship round of the playoffs. Cause I'll have actually have a buy for winning my division. So that is another thing to consider as we look into the situation. Some of you guys have good records. You know, if you're seven and two, eight and one, you know, if you look like you're going to win your division, you also have to keep a, a small eye on monitoring what the matchups look like later in the year come week 15 and week 16 or if you don't have if you don't look like you're going to get a buy of course include week 14 but that's my wrap up for this video not a long one but hopefully has the information that you guys need hopefully going to help you guys out get the advantage you need this week as always one of the big uses for this video is one last chance to ask questions and to help you guys out but thank you so much for supporting us guys you have a great day and god bless